and ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock, whence ye are hewn, and uh, to the hole of the pit. Look at that. From whence ye are dig. Look at verse 2. And it says in verse 2, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, that bear you, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him it was dug from the peach and the hole of idolatry of defilement of degradation nothing in your hand you bring we're looking at romans chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 10 romans chapter 3 verse 10 this is where we have all been this is where we all came from. In Romans chapter 3, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none righteous of all the descendants of Adam, of all the offspring of Adam. There is none righteous, no, not one. There's no one that can come before the Lord and say, here am I, I come on my own merit. I come with my own worthiness. No, nobody can say that because you see, there is no reconciliation with God or the works of the flesh, with what we have done. There is no reconciliation, justification with God, with anything we can produce out of our own strength. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, there is none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after God. There is none that seeketh after God. Oh, you say, I know people that seek after God. No, they're not seeking after God. They're seeking after bread and butter. They're seeking after what he can give them. They're seeking after the things of this world. They're seeking after money. They're seeking after influence. They're seeking after position. They're seeking after whatever. But in the real sense, there is none that seeketh after God, it tells us in verse 12, in verse 12, it says, they are all gone out of the, everyone, 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 they are all gone out of the way. They all together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So you cannot come to God. You want to enter into the kingdom of God and then you look at what you think that good thing you do but you know there is a private agenda for that thing you did and you want to come to God. Look at the good I did underneath, underneath at the bottom of that good thing you thought you did there was a depravity and there was an evil disposition. There was a kind of thought you are doing this so they will see you. You are doing this so you'll be recognized. You are doing this so that you'll be honored. You are doing this so that, so that, so that. Everything we have done is changed by the thoughts we have. It's changed by all the, you know, all the thoughts we have had. That's why it said there is none that has done good. No, not one. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher with their tongues. They have used the seed and the poison of us is under their leaves. The poison of us is under their leaves. Not on top of their leaves, not on top of their tongue. There's something hidden there. That even the good they think they are doing, it injures people spiritually because there is poison under their leaves. How can we come to God then and say we're bringing something? God, look at the good thing I've done. Can I use this to reconcile myself to you? No. Can I use this to befriend you? No. They are poisonous. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, it says, Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, their feet are swift to shed blood. Their feet are swift to shed blood. 
well somebody might not kill but jesus said if you are angry with your brother you are a murderer and how many times every human being before we came into the kingdom we indulged in anger and the anger is interpreted by god as murdering and if you had chance you would have done something more terrible to that person you hate and to that person you are angry with the feet are swift to shed blood in verse 16 verse 16 says destruction and misery are in their ways look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says and uh, the way of peace they have not known the way of peace somebody might be in church for how many years now if the fellow does not have the heart of christ the mind of christ the spirit of christ the nature of christ he'll not know the way of peace he will you know trouble this and trouble that and he will not know to be at peace in his heart not know to be at peace in his life and there is peace in reconciliation there is peace when you come to the lord by faith and you are justified but these ones all people on earth until you meet christ of all the people you know there is at least one enemy of all the people they are working with there is at least one enemy of all the people they interact with there is at least a person they don't like to see they don't like to hear because they have not manifested the faith that enters into the kingdom look at verse 18 in verse 18 it says there is no fear of God before their eyes. The people who are outside the kingdom, no matter, they might be religious, they might be whatever, there is no fear of God before their eyes. They never think, how does God look at this? How will God judge this? How will God appreciate this? They just act. They just do whatever they want to do because there is no justification there is no reconciliation with god there is no regeneration there's no transformation in their lives there is no fear of god before their eyes verse 19 in verse 19 it says now we know that what things soever the law says it says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before god all the world guilty before god therefore there is no justification or reconciliation ever possible of the works of the flesh we're looking at number two here number two we're looking at justification with righteousness imputed imputed without the works but by faith it tells us in romans chapter four in romans chapter four we're looking at verse three it says for what says the scripture abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness that what counted to him for righteousness what does it mean look at verse 22 in verse 22 it says and therefore it was imputed it was imputed to him for righteousness that's how abraham got the righteousness it was imputed unto him he came with nothing in his hand he came with nothing to recommend him he came with nothing to make him worthy and he said lord i believe and it is that faith in in the lord because of the coming christ is that faith that brought that justification and that imputation actually that 
was in Genesis chapter 15. Look at verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6. And he believed in the Lord. Far back in Genesis. He believed in the Lord from the beginning of the Bible. You, you know, people think that salvation, justification only came at the time when Jesus died on the cross. And there are people that will say, you know, all those people that followed Christ, Simon Peter, James, John, Matthew, all the others, they were not born again. Righteousness was not imputed unto them. They say, because Christ had not died. They said it's only after the cross that righteousness becomes imputed unto anyone. But look at this far back in Genesis. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. That, that the faith in Hebrews chapter 11 reading from verse 8. Hebrews 11 reading from verse 8 by faith by faith Abraham not by works by faith Abraham not by trying to do my best by faith Abraham not by turning over a new leaf by faith Abraham not by going to an a church an assembly a fellowship somewhere by faith Abraham not by changing my dress by faith Abraham not by joining a congregation of people and learning and acting like them mimicking them not by copycat copying them how they dress how they talk how they move how they bend how they kneel no by faith we bring nothing in our hand we know we're not qualified it's not a meritorious thing we didn't merit anything but by faith abraham when he was called to go out into the place which he should after receive for an inheritance it says that he obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went by faith and that's how we come to the lord today we don't know anything the past does not qualify us the present does not make us marriage anything but welcome because he has called me he called you he's come to call everyone to repentance so everything in the past everything at the present you leave and then you come unto the lord we're looking at uh, number three here number three is justification with regeneration imparted without worthiness and through faith justification with regeneration now imparted one word imputed the other word imparted when we couldn't pay for anything we have done christ has paid it all and because he's paid it all we believe in him as we believe in him he imputes his righteousness on us the righteousness we did not have he had that righteousness and he said give me your sin and i give you my righteousness and we accepted the deal we gave him our sin and he gave us his righteousness that's imputation but it doesn't leave us like that imputation that belongs to him coming to us impartation now he imparts that righteousness he touches our nature he touches our heart he touches our spirit and now he imparts that unto us he changes our nature and he gives us the divine nature and because of that impartation now we can live the way he wants us to live i'm crucified with christ 
Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And so the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and uh, gave himself for me. Impartation. We're told in uh, Titus chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 5. In Titus chapter 3, verse 5, not by works, the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Look at that. He saved us mercy, grace, love. According to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration. He washed us. He took the defilement away. He washed our nature. He washed our hearts. He washed what we have been. And that depravity does not continue in us. He washed us. It says, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. That the change that came. We're looking at Romans chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 5 verse 18 it says wherefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all to condemnation everything we did brought condemnation even when we did what was superficially good the spirit of God said in our heart yes you did something superficially good, but what was your intention? Are you not throwing down water so that you can go on wet ground? Are you not doing that because you're expecting this? If everybody around was blind, if everybody around you couldn't see the good thing you are supposedly doing, will you do that? If the people who can say well done, if there's nobody to say well done, if there's nobody to congratulate you, if there's nobody to praise you, would you have done that? You would not. Now, that means then condemnation came upon all. But now it says that the righteousness of one, the free gift he has came upon all men unto justification of life. Because Christ died, he gave up his righteousness so that you can receive that righteousness. Look at verse 19 there. In verse 19, it says, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one of Christ shall many be made righteous. Many made righteous. Romans chapter 6 we're looking at verse 18. In Romans chapter 6, verse 18, it said, Being then made free, made free. It's somebody that made us free. It's Christ that made us free. It is his um, work on the cross that made us free. You can't do that yourself. You can't make that for yourself. If you try it by yourself, you don't look to Calvary. If you try it by yourself, you don't look to Christ, you will still be as dirty as you were. But be made free from sin. Ye became the servants of righteousness. Ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. In verse 22, it tells us, but now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. Ye have your fruit unto holiness. Fruit does not come except we we'll plant the seed the seed must be planted it must germinate it brings up the tree and then the fruit will grow the seed of the word has to be planted in our heart before we can bring forth the fruit of 
holiness holiness nobody can have that holiness somebody might have a kind of superficial holiness a kind of pharisaic holiness externally holy but inwardly corrupt inwardly evil inwardly of dead men's bones inwardly hypocritical but it's when the seed of the word is planted in our heart and when the seed of the woman enters in our heart that as it lives in us then the fruit of holiness will grow and will show and be evident it tells us they are then but now be made free from sin and become the servants to God ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life without holiness you're not going to live eternally with God he is holy and because he's holy he lives in a holy place heaven and is surrounded by holy angels and the redeemed of the Lord who have gone before us they are also holy and for you to get to heaven you must have that holiness and you cannot have the holiness anywhere except you come to the Lord by faith and you are justified by faith and he imputes the righteousness of Christ upon you and imparts unto you the holiness which is acceptable to God for you to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord we're coming to point number two point number two we're looking at Abraham's justification of friendship by a worthy work now we're talking about something else about Abraham Abraham at the faith without works now Abraham also had the faith with works that's why God said Abraham walk before me and be thou perfect I accepted you into the kingdom I accepted you to enter without works you didn't walk right but accepted you and imputed unto you righteousness now you have entered now you have come into the kingdom you know what you have to do now you have to walk before me and be thou perfect and that one is a continuous thing the other faith without works is an instantaneous thing enter instantaneous take the step of faith and enter sirs what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Enter. There's nothing to waste time about. You're not trying to dig anything. You're not trying to do anything. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And the Philippian jailer entered in without works, but now it took them the same hour of the night and he washed their wounds he had entered now and he washed their wounds he had entered now and he gave them meal in his own house that is you have entered now show the evidence of that faith by what she do Look at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, come down, make haste. For I must abide in thy house today. That one, he can come down. And the Lord will abide in his house today by faith, not by what? After coming in, as he came down, he said, Lord, up of my goods I give to the poor. He didn't have to do that to enter in, but the stinginess and the craftiness and everything taken away now by entering in. He has to show the evidence that I have 
entered in. And also, it says, if I've taken anything by false accusation from anyone, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said, salvation is come to this house. His heart was now changed. An impartation has now been given. The stinginess of the past is now gone because he has entered in now. And Abraham now became a friend of God because of the worthy work. Hey, look at James chapter 2, verse 20. It says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? <laughs> Somebody is running around. I'm saved. I'm saved. No change of life. I'm saved, I'm saved. There's no clean character. I'm saved, I'm saved. There is nothing to show for it. He said, the man is vain because his manners are vain. The man is vain because his profession is vain. The man is vain because his action, his attitude is vain. Will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Look at verse 21. In verse 21, was not Abraham a father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Oh, somebody says, this one I don't understand. Justified by faith. Romans chapter 4. And here in James, justified by works. Let me explain. Justified by faith. Genesis chapter 15. Before he had any child. I seek had not been born. And the Lord called him out of the, all the Chaldees. And he didn't know where he was going. And the Lord said, come out. Like God says, come out from among them. And be separate, says the Lord. And I will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. And he came out. And he was justified by faith. After Many years after chapter 15 of Genesis, we come to chapter 6, chapter 7, uh, chapter 17, uh, chapter 18, chapter 19, chapter 20, chapter 21. Isaac was born, and Isaac was growing. Chapter 22, Isaac had grown. To the point you could ask the question, my father, my father, here is the wood and there is fire. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Many years between chapter 15 of Genesis and chapter 22. But now God was asking for another thing. What was he asking for? To find out whether Abraham loved God. God with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his mind. Whether Abraham loved God above Isaac, whether Abraham actually will behave like a friend of God. He had become a friend of God. And now God was asking his friend, and was saying, Offer him to me on the altar, on the mountain that I will show you. And he obeyed God justification by works after justification by faith and that's what happened here that abraham's justification of friendship to justify the friendship to justify you say you are my friend can you do anything and everything i command you can you give me back what i have given you yes i will that's the worthy work. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the faith and friendship of the justified Abraham. Justified already by faith. And now he became a friend of God. Justify that friendship. Number two, the faith 
and faithfulness of justified appointees the lord has appointed and because the lord has appointed like he appointed abraham to be the father of many nations the faithfulness he requires after that appointment number three is the faith and fellowship of justified ambassadors look at number one number one we're looking at the faith and friendship of the justified abraham we're told in james chapter 2 james chapter 2 we're looking at verse 22 in verse 22 it says seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was the faith made perfect verse 23 in verse 23 and the scripture was fulfilled which says abraham believed god and it was imputed unto him for righteousness and it was called the friend of god when he was in the all the caldis was not a friend of god when he was with his father and nahor he was not a friend of god before he came out and believed on the lord he was not a friend of god but he had faith in god after that he was a friend of god and now he justified the friendship i say in chapter 41 reading from verse 8 i say 41 verse 8 but thou israel art my servant jacob whom i have chosen the seed of abraham the seed of abraham the offspring of abraham my friend god said is my friend a friend of god that could offer his only son unto god that's a real friend we're looking at uh, exodus chapter 33 verse 11 exodus chapter 33 and from verse 11 and the lord spake unto moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend and the lord spake face to face that's what he did with abraham abraham do you know i have something to do in sodom i'll tell you their sin has come up to me up to the heavens and i'm going to destroy them but i can't do anything without telling you a friend of god and abraham said lord can, can we talk about it friend to friend what if you see 50 righteous people there will you still destroy them no i will not hold on god don't go yet what if you see 40 people there 30 people there 20 people there 10 people there i will not destroy them for the 10. he spoke to abraham like he spoke to moses face to face as a man spoke to his friend now what made him to have that is faith with a worthy work faith with a worthy work it tells us in john chapter 15 john chapter 15 we're reading from verse 13 it says greater love has no man than days that a man lay down his life for his friends god the father had a friend abraham god the son has many friends the disciples and the believers today then in verse 14 it tells us yeah my friends if you do whatsoever i command you the justification of the friendship we have with the lord is obedience where his friends and he says here my friends if you do whatsoever i command you he says blessed are the meek for they shall inherit there and we become meek 
by grace, by the grace of God, we don't have that meekness before entering in. Now we have entered in. And we're the friends of Jesus. I will bring meekness, gentleness, humility, lowliness into our hearts to justify our friendship with him. He says, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I have commanded you. Here we are, we bring a gift to the altar. And we remember that somebody has urged against us. We don't say, that's his business, that's his cup of tea, he has something against me, don't mind him. No, he says, the Lord says, leave your gift at the altar and go reconcile with him and come back and offer your gift. We don't, we don't have to do that to get salvation, but now we are saved, we are justified by faith without works but now we're friends of Christ and because we're friends of Christ we don't just live a life you know over there we step on that person's toe we step on that person's mind we step on that person's ear we step on that person's eyes and then if he minds that that's his business no because we're friends of God will do what Christ says because now we're justifying our friendship with him. It tells us in verse 15, in verse 15 it says, henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father have I made known unto you like the father made known unto Abraham because he's his friend everything he wanted to do in Sodom he said we're now his friend and because of that he does not leave us in darkness he wants to do this and he says he has told us everything he wants to do why for us to justify our friendship with him. I cannot go about now saying, well, I walk by faith without works, faith without works, faith without works. No, it's not faith with your work. It's not faith with your worthy work. It's not faith with your worthy action, with your worthy behavior. Faith and friendship of the justified Abraham. We're looking at number two here is faith and faithfulness of justified appointees. We're looking at uh, James chapter 2, reading from verse 24. You see then how that by works, by action, by behavior, by sacrifice, a man is justified not by faith only. It's combining two uh, sides of justification here. There's the justification at the entry point. There's the justification for expression. Expression of his friendship with God. Expression of his faithfulness to God. Expression of his present abiding faithfulness unto God. The justification that comes by faith at the beginning. The justification that comes by the expression of faithfulness while you are walking with the Lord. It tells us in James chapter 2, reading from verse 24, you see then how that by works a man is justified. A believer is justified. A friend of God is justified. You see then how that a person that is walking in the perfection that God requires is justified not by faith only. Hey, look at ne Nehemiah chapter 9. And we're reading here from verse 7. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 7. Thou art the Lord, the God, who did choose Abraham and brought him forth out of all of the Chaldeans 
and givest him the name of Abraham. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and foundest his heart faithful. Found his heart faithful. Found his heart faithful before thee. And madest a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites and the, and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Gagashites to give it, I say, to his seed and has performed thy words for thou art righteous look at verse 9 in verse 9 still talking about Abraham Abraham and it says and did see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt and heardest the cry by the Red Sea it tells us that for Abraham God fulfilled his word and God even after he had died God continued to fulfill his word to his descendants because he found him faithful think about us believers today in first Corinthians chapter 4 reading here from verse 2 first Corinthians chapter 4 reading from verse 2 moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful it's required in you it's required of me that a man that a woman that a believer that a friend of Christ be found faithful it tells us in verse 16 of that same chapter in um, first Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 wherefore I beseech you be ye followers of me in verse 17 verse 17 affirms for this cause I have sent unto you Timothy who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord and faithful in the Lord the people will be recognized as the followers of Christ the people will be entrusted with something God is doing that the people who are faithful in the Lord who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church it tells us in Galatians chapter 4 reading from verse 7 Galatians chapter 4 verse 7 wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of God through Christ look at Colossians chapter 4 in Colossians chapter 4 we're looking at verse 7 Colossians now chapter 4 and in verse 7 it says and my stage shall Titicus declare unto you who is a beloved brother and a faithful minister a faithful minister the people we can trust today the people we can bring along like Paul brought this man along they're the people who are faithful they're faithful in little things they're faithful in big things they're faithful to the word they're faithful to the way of the Lord and it says a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord look at verse 17 in verse 17 it tells us it says and say to Archippus take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it that you have faithfulness and that you remain faithful through thick and thin in the dry season in the rainy season when the weather is conducive when the weather is contrary when you feel happy when you feel unhappy when you're sad when you are glad 
faithfulness unto the Lord. We're looking at number two here. Number two here in the face and fellowship of justified ambassadors. The face and the fellowship of justified ambassadors. It tells us in James chapter 2, reading from verse 25, it says, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works hold on you remember we've been talking about justification by faith and justification by works first justification by faith when she saw those spies that came from uh, the people of israel she recognized and she said we have heard what the lord had done in egypt now you crossed the red sea and what you did to those unbelieving kings and our hearts had no strength and all our people are afraid because of you and then she said this is her faith she said we know the lord had given you the land and also pleaded give me a promise that you will not destroy me when you come and save me and save my household. Receiving them like that, protecting them like that, confessing that God truly had given them the land. And I want to be part of the people, the covenant people of God. That's justification by faith. But now, the next thing, having known that God had given them the land, and she wasn't going to fight against them, she wasn't going to report them to the king, she wasn't going to expose them to danger, and she protected them, that the justification by works. And that's what he's saying here. Likewise, also, was not really have the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. It's what justified. And now she wanted to be part of the children of Israel. That's the fellowship. That's the fellowship. That's the fellowship. That, uh, you know, I'm saved by faith, but I want to retain the fellowship with the people of God. And I will need that kind of fellowship. We're told in First John chapter 1, First John chapter 1, we're reading from verse 3, that that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us fellowship with us and how do we how do we maintain that fellowship by continuing with the doctrine by continuing with the demand by continuing with the desires of the lord and the desire of the assembly it says truly a fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ in acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts chapter 2 reading from verse 42 in verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship fellowship you see we have faith in the lord we enter in and to stay in we maintain that faith with the fellowship we have with the people of God, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. We're coming now to point number three. Point number three, we're looking at abiding as the just through faithfulness to the Lord. Faithfulness to the Lord. We enter in we have come in and now want to abide as the just people, just justified, and that in faithfulness to the word. In Habakkuk chapter 2, reading from verse 4, Habakkuk chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 4. Behold, a soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live 
by faith. Uh, you know, there are people that say that the Old Testament people did not have faith. Of course, they had faith. Moses had faith in God. Abraham had faith in God. Joshua had faith in God. David had faith in God. And he trusted the Lord. I say he had faith in God. He even said that the Gentiles will put their trust, their faith in you. And it says over here, Old Testament, that Joshua shall labor by his faith. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 17. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17, it tells us, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith look at galatians chapter 3 verse 11 in galatians chapter 3 verse 11 it says but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith over and over and over the just shall live by faith we enter in by faith we continue to walk in the narrow path in the highway of holiness by faith and then we end up by faith this all died in faith by faith faith all the way through we're looking at three things here number one we're looking at the propitiation for the justified by faith in his worthiness number two the perseverance of the justified in faithfulness to the word faithfulness to the word number three the past of the just by faith in the word look at number one number one is the propitiation for the justified by faith in his worthiness romans chapter 3 reading from verse 23 in romans chapter 3 verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god all people need this faith to be cleansed, to be saved, to be redeemed, to be justified, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, in verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation a covering, the cleansing, and the pardoning of their sin, a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of the sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. In verse 26, it assures us to declare, I say at this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. A pardon comes now by believing on Jesus. Provision, covering, cleansing comes by believing on Jesus, the mercy of God, the grace of God now coming by the believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It tells us in First John chapter 2, reading from verse 1. First John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also 
for the sins of the whole world in the whole wide world anyone going to have justification redemption reconciliation now must believe on the lord jesus christ look at number two here number two is uh, the perseverance of the justified in faithfulness to the word hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 we're reading from verse 38 it says now the just shall live by faith we enter into the kingdom by faith and we now continue to walk and live by faith it says now the just shall live by faith and but if any man draw back if any man says well the faith i had at the beginning that's enough i cannot go away from the narrow way and go to the broad way and i'm still fine no you are not fine because if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him verse 39 in verse 39 but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition they were saved before they entered in by faith before, and now they depart from the way of righteousness. They depart from the highway of holiness. And you say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it matters a lot. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You will not draw back. I will not draw back. Look at Matthew chapter 24. And we're reading from verse 12. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. In verse 13, it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You will endure unto the end. Look at number three here. Number three here, we're looking at the path of the just by faith in the word. The path of the just that the just is following. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 and the path of the just is as the shining light the path of the just is as the shining light it's like you wake up in the morning and it's early and the light has just come it's light but it's not so bright then as the day goes on it becomes brighter and brighter until the noon time that is the brightest that's the way our lives ought to be we're walking by faith we're walking by faithfulness we're walking in fellowship and we're walking in the real understanding of focus on the word of god and the path of the just it's a shining light that shineth more and more your light will shine more and more your light will shine more and more. Your faith will shine more and more. And your dedication to God, your consecration to God will shine more and more. Not somebody that you enter in now by faith. And then before a month, before a year, before 10 years, they're already drawing back. And they're not shining as they were shining 10 years ago. No, it says if you're a just person, if you're a justified person, it says the path of the righteous will be shining more and more until the perfect day until the perfect day you've got grace god will give you more grace you've got strength god will give you more strength you have faith and the lord faithfulness and the lord and your faith and faithfulness will increase in jesus name my faith will increase my faithfulness will increase the sufficient grace of god will increase in my life uh -uh. The sufficient grace of God, say that, the sufficient grace of God 
will increase in my life. The Lord confirm that in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in our prayer. What we have heard today, the faith we ought to have, the justification we have, the life of righteousness we have. Have you entered by faith? Are you expressing your faith? Are you expressing your justification by faith? And are you shining more and more, more and more? Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.